Kraft presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Each week at this time, Kraft presents from Hollywood, California, Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve, written by Leonard L. Levinson. We'll hear from the Great Gildersleeve in just a moment. But first, I want to remind you that these are challenging days for every one of us. It's our duty to produce more to help meet our country's increasing needs. And that takes plenty of good food, as you wise homemakers know, Wholesome, nutritious food that provides the energy and nourishment your hard-working, hard-playing family needs. That's why you should know about parquet margarine, made by Kraft. Parquet margarine is a delicious food that's packed full of wholesome nourishment. It's one of the best sources of food energy you can serve. And important to you housewives who know how essential vitamins are, every pound of parquet margarine contains 9,000 units of vitamin A making it a reliable year-round source for your whole family. What's more, parquet is the margarine with the delicious flavor, whether you use it at the table for baking or for pan frying. So why not give your family the benefit of this grand-tasting, nourishing food? Tomorrow, ask your dealer for a pound or two of economical parquet margarine, made by Kraft. Just ask for parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y. And now let's visit our friend, the great Gildersleeve. Come on, wake up, Judge Hooker. Pay attention to your checkers. It's your move. I know it, Gildersleeve. I was merely studying the board. What, with your eyes closed? (laughs) Let's speed this up. We haven't got all night here. All right. There, there. There and there. (laughs) Now crown me. I'd love to, but I haven't got anything to do it with. Hooker, I don't see how you keep beating me, honestly. In fact, I don't think you do, honestly. Gildersleeve, you're a pushover. You couldn't win a game from a backward baboon with a dozen checkers up your sleeve. I could, too. Um, I mean, I wouldn't need a dozen checkers. I'll show you, Hooker. Set him up again and pull in your belt. Because this time I'm going to beat the hell of Leroy. How are you tonight? (laughs) Judge Hooker. Leroy. Say, Unc, can I... Uh, can you what, Leroy? Well, I hate to keep pestering you, Bart, but can I see the circus tomorrow afternoon? Not unless they happen to pitch the tent in the front yard of the Peter B. Flugelhammer Junior High School. Is that where you go, Leroy? Yeah, Flugie Junior High. Say, I grew up with Peter B. Flugelhammer Sr. That's who the junior high school was named after. If, well, I thought the school was named after Peter B. Flugelhammer Jr. No, Junior was the son of Sr. after whom the junior high school was named. Poor Junior. He never could finish senior high. Yo. But gee, Uncle Mort, could you call up school and ask if I could skip tomorrow? I did, Leroy. I even went so far as to predict that you wouldn't be feeling very well tomorrow. What did they say? They told me that an excuse for illness while the circus is in town must be accompanied by a note from your doctor. Shucks, that's a heck of a note. Yes. (laughs) Well, there's no use grousing, young man. Remember, school must come first. Now, sit down and get started with your homework. Yes, Leroy, your homework, that's the thing that's going to count in later life, not going to the circus. I don't think so, Judge, because in my later life, I expect to be a lion tamer. Oh? You don't need any education for that. All you need is a kitchen chair and the right kind of breakfast food. (laughs) Well, yes. This lion taming is new, though. Last week, you were going to become a pitcher with the Brooklyn Dodgers. Oh, that was last week. Oh, Gee, I wouldn't mind missing the circus so much, Uncle Mort, but I hate to see those passes go to waste. Oh, did you get passes, Gildersleeve? Did I get passes? Yes, sir. I've got certain connections. Yeah, Uncle Mort guessed the right number of beans in that jar in the drugstore window. (laughs) Yes, I connected that time. (laughs) Gee, Uncle Mort, are you sure you can't take me? Uh, I'm sorry, Leroy, but you'd better make up your mind to skip the circus. Oh, gee, a guy can't get any fun out of life. You know, Gildersleeve, sometimes I think our school system has become too scientific, too streamlined. You're right, Judge. These days, everything is streamlined. Uh, except me. Yes. Things were a lot different in the days when I went to school. (laughs) What a memory. 
I sat, I sat next to Petey Flugelhammer. Huh? That was long before he was elected lieutenant governor and then named the school after himself. Oh. We had none of this modern stuff like getting a doctor's prescription to go to the circus. Yes, it was the same in my school days, too, Judge. Of course, I'm not as old as you are. What do you mean, Gildersleeve? You were shaving when I was a little shaver. I was not. You were, too. All right, all right. I was always taught not to contradict my elders. <laughs> <laughs> Come to think of it, Judge, we kids used to have a lot more fun than modern children have. I can still remember some of the tricks we pulled at school. So do I. Shenanigans, they were called. Yes. I'll never forget the time I dropped a paper bag full of water on the Spanish teacher. Only it turned out to be the new athletic coach. And when he caught me, boy, was he athletic. (laughs) (laughs) That's nothing. I once sneaked up behind Miss Pettibone's desk and tacked her dress to the floor. (laughs) Kids don't do a thing like that these days. Yeah, kids can't do a thing like that these days. <laughs> Say, uh, Judge, did you ever put eggs in the principal's umbrella? No, did you? Uh-huh. I had my own hen and I saved eggs for a rainy day. <laughs> <laughs> I can still see him lifting that umbrella over his head. <laughs> well, I put alum in the water pitcher at our graduation exercises. Oh, that's a peachy stunt. <laughs> what happened? I didn't graduate. <laughs> Oh, yes, youth. Sometimes I wish I were a kid again, just so I could pull a few more of those cute little innocent juvenile pranks. Well, they're a thing of the past. Yeah. I never hear of kids doing those things these days. Not enough imagination, I guess. That's right. You know, I remember when a dog and pony show came to our town and all us kids made up our minds to go. You know how we got the afternoon off? No, how? Well, I climbed up on the schoolhouse roof and stuffed my coat into the chimney. <laughs> Boy, I wish you could have seen that smoke pour in and those kids pour out. <laughs> Gildy, I'll bet you were a car. Oh, that wasn't anything. Did I ever tell you about the time we smuggled the horse up in the bell tower at college? No, <laughs> Uncle Mort, tell us about it. Well, I borrowed this. Leroy, I didn't know that you were still here. Sure, you told me to do my homework. Say, did you ever do any homework, Uncle Mort? Uh, stacks of it. Gee, when did you find the time? Didn't it interfere with your jokes? Now see what you've done, Gildersleeve. Given the boy a wrong impression of our childhood. Me? You started it. Tacking teacher's skirts to the floor. And you a superior court judge. Aren't you ashamed? Well, how about you egging the principal on and trying to brain everybody with bags of water? What do you mean, everybody? Just our Spanish teacher, Miss Olofsson, that's all. (laughs) Now, Leroy, don't get us wrong. Judge Hooker and I were merely reminiscing about an era that doesn't exist anymore. I'll say it doesn't. You couldn't get away with those corny gags today. Those gags weren't corny, Leroy. They were mighty clever. Uh, <coughs> huh? Oh, oh, yes, yes. They were terrible. Uh, the big kids made me do them. I'm ashamed of myself. Aren't you, Judge Hooker? Yes. I was a bad boy. <laughs> you, you see, Leroy... Gee, you two treat me as if I was 12 years old. You are 12 years old, Leroy. Sure, I know, but I don't like to be treated that way. You'll have to hurry, Marjorie, if you're going to the circus with me. I'm almost ready. What's the rush, Uncle Mort? Well, I'd like to get there on time for once. No matter when I start, it seems I always arrive in time to get caught in the opening procession. One year, a hippopotamus chased me around the ring twice. I never did find my seat. (laughs) That's too bad Leroy couldn't get off from school to come with us. Yes, the poor boy. Well, we'll bring him back a red balloon and a little whip with a tassel. Hey, anybody home? Hi. Leroy. Gee, I'm glad I caught you before you left for the circus. Leroy, what are you doing home at this hour? School was dismissed just now. Come on, let's go to the circus. By the way, Leroy... Why were classes dismissed? Well, uh, you might call it an accident. Accident? What was the accident? Oh, nothing serious. Then what was it? Oh, it seems they had to get all the students out quick, on account of all the rooms had to be aired out. Aired out? They did? Why? Well, nobody knows for sure exactly, but the general opinion is that uh, somehow or other, a skunk got into the air conditioning system. Oh! Oh! Circus swell. Mm-hmm. Best I've ever seen. How did you like the fellow who did the swan dive into the tank of burning gasoline, Uncle Mort? I liked him, but I don't think Secretary Ickes would. 
Leroy, there's something that's been troubling me. It's that skunk in your school. You mean Mr. Proctor, the principal? No, Leroy. <laughs> the one that got into the air conditioning system. Do you happen to know how it got in there? No, I don't. Say, remember the tiger that rode on the elephant's back? How did they train him to do that, Uncle Mort? Oh, with kindness, I suppose. Uh, Leroy, did you happen to have anything to do with it? With the tiger, Uncle Mort? No, the skunk. That wasn't a skunk, Uncle. It was a tiger. Tigers and skunks have different kinds of stripes. I know they have. I'm talking about school. But, you know, I've been thinking. Isn't it a strange coincidence that this accident occurred on the day the circus came to town? Yeah, funny, ain't it? Uh. Uh. Say, Uncle Mort, what do you think would happen if when the lion tamer had his head in the lion's mouth, the lion suddenly had a sneeze? Well, I don't think anyone would say gazoon tight. <laughs> <laughs> now, Leroy, I hope that nothing Judge Hooker and I said about our school day pranks caused you to try to imitate us. Oh, no, sir. You understand we were just talking about old times. Yes, sir, like Judge Hooker says. That's about all you old-timers have got left. Your memory. Yeah. What did you say? Uh, good afternoon, Bertie. Is Leroy home from school yet? Well, let me look in the refrigerator. Uh, no, sir. Did you expect to find him in there? <laughs> no, but I can tell if he's here by what ain't. <laughs> well, maybe he wasn't hungry this afternoon That boy, why, he's nothing but appetite held together by skin and bones Oh, what's the matter? Well, there's a lot of strange things going on at Leroy's school And I'm afraid that maybe I'm partly to blame How come you messing around the school? Is you one of them pants teachers? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just that Judge Hooker and I were talking about some little pranks we used to play when we were in school a little uh, harmless things, you know. Uh-huh. Uh, well, Leroy happened to overhear us, and now I'm afraid he's showing us the modern versions with the uh, chromium trimmings. Uh-huh. Uh, what makes you think little Leroy's doing fumadiddles? Well, uh, did you read the afternoon paper? No, sir. It never gets to me till the following morning. Oh, yes. Well, I've got it right here. Listen to this. Juvenile Joker startles school. Police were called early today to investigate a large, stout lady's body seen suspended from the window of Principal Poultney Proctor at Flugelhammer Junior High School. Oh, who was it, Miss Proctor? Yes. No, but listen. Closer inspection revealed that the body was a dummy, stuffed with old football pads, wearing a green and purple silk dress, size 48. Green and purple silk? Size 48? Yes. Yeah. Sounds like my Sunday go-to-meeting dress, the one that was kidnapped off the clothesline last night. Yes, doesn't it? Well, what's my dress doing in the newspaper? Uh, I don't know, Bertie. <laughs> Shh, Bertie, here comes Leroy. Do you think he did it? Shh. Yeah. Afternoon, Uncle Morse. Hiya, Bertie. Say, is this your old dress? That's my new dress, Leroy, and what you doing with it? Why, Piggy Banks just gave it to me. He says the wind must have blown it over into his yard. He found it under a window. Young man, isn't this the dress that was hanging out of Mr. Proctor's window this morning? You mean on the dummy that was suspended from school? If... Well, how could it be if it belongs to Bertie? What do you think, Bertie? I ain't saying nothing. I'm only too glad to get my dress back without paying ransom. I'm going to hide it this time. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Uh, look, Leroy, uh, don't think of me just as your uncle and your guardian. Uh, think of me as your pal, uh, your buddy. Now, if there's anything that's troubling your little mind, why don't you just come right out with it? Well... Okay, Unc, there is something that's been bothering me. I understand. Go right ahead, my boy. What is it? Well, how did you ever get that horse up into the bell tower at college? Oh! I asked you to come here tonight, Judge Hooker, is because you and I are turning Leroy's school topsy-turvy. Why, I haven't been near the place... We've been doing it by remote control. Remember how we shot off our mouths in front of Leroy about our school day monkey shines? Yes, and say, I just remembered another one. Forget it. Leroy has been up to all our old tricks. Oh, his teachers have caught him, huh? No, that kid's smarter than we were. But we got to stop him from going on with him. Well, maybe if I gave him a little lecture... Hooker, you don't understand children. That wouldn't work at all. We've got to pretend we don't know what's going on. That shouldn't be hard for you to do. <laughs> when Leroy comes in, that'll be our cue to start casually chatting about the evils of practical joking. Yeah. Yeah, subtle propaganda, you know. How about it, Hooker? We can try it. 
Too bad this whole thing had to happen. You know, Gildersleeve, it would never have started if you hadn't opened your fat face. Me? Why, it was you that started it, you little travesty on justice. Is that so? Why, Gildersleeve, if you had the intelligence of a jackass. Uh, but no, why should I daydream? <laughs> There's no use arguing with you. Why not? Because I don't argue with blubberheads. Well, I do, you blubberhead. <laughs> Just because you're a judge, do you think? No, I can answer that myself. You don't think. Don't you provoke me, you big water wind. Oh, that settles it. I'm going to lambaste you with... Oh, excuse me, I didn't think... Oh, uh, oh, come right in, Leroy. I was, uh, I was just telling Judge Hooker how to uh, baste a lamb. Wasn't I, Judge Hooker? <laughs> huh? Oh, yes, yeah. yes. Don't let us disturb you, Leroy, my boy. Go right ahead and do your homework. Just pay no attention to us. I won't. Uh, uh, as we were saying, Judge, uh, don't you think that juvenile delinquency often starts with some innocent boyish prank? When were we saying that? Oh, uh, of course, Gildersleeve. Uh. Quite often, a young fella starts out for a lark and winds up in a cage. How's that? Oh, Judge. <laughs> Then you think that their practical joking can lead to a serious consequences? Surely. Yeah. It starts out with a fella dipping girls' pigtails into ink wells, and then he becomes bored with that and puts firecrackers in the coal scuttle. Yes. Or water in the teacher's galoshes, and then setting them out to freeze. Never heard of that one before. Huh? That's only good in real cold weather. Well, in summertime, you can always put flypaper on all the chairs. Yes. Yeah. With the words, kick me, printed on the back. <laughs> Say, I did that when I was in fourth grade. You should have seen the fun at recess. <laughs> you know, I used to hunt for frogs during recess and put them all in the lunchboxes. <laughs> Once I made a mistake and put one in my own lunchbox. <laughs> <laughs> did I tell you about the time that I snagged our principal's wig with a fish pole and then hoisted it to the top of the flagpole? Oh, boy. I wish I could have seen... Oh, my goodness. What have we been saying? Huh? Leroy, don't you pay any attention to this old... Go uh, say, where is Leroy? I don't know. You said pretend he wasn't here, and by George, he isn't. Yes, and a lucky thing, too. How did we ever get started talking like that again? I remember distinctly. You began it, Gildersleeve. Me? Why, you feeble little fuddle-headed fuddy-duddy. Smile when you say that, Gildersleeve. Smile? I'll laugh right out loud. <laughs> Hello, Marjorie. Hello, Pierpont. I came to see Meatball. Who? Meatball. You know, Leroy. Only you don't like us kids to call him Leroy anymore. Like I don't like to be called Pierpont. All right. Piggy. <laughs> Come on in. Oh, Leroy. Piggy Banks is here to see you. Come on to the library, Piggy. It's right that way. Thanks. Well, come on in. Don't be bashful. But your uncle, that's him behind that newspaper, ain't it? What's the matter with him? Oh, nothing. He always does that after dinner. He's digesting his food. Oh. Ain't we going to disturb him? No, we had roast beef and potatoes for dinner. Nothing will bother Unc for another hour at least. <laughs> now, let's get going on that history stuff. Well, I know Miss Keller's going to ask us about the vice presidents tomorrow. Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. She's going through the book exactly the way she did last year, the first time I took the course. <laughs> okay, I, I think I got it memorized. But is she going to ask us the names of all the vice presidents? She did last year. I kept a diary. All right, but gee, what a question to ask. Well, you take the list and see if I get them right. Shoot. Uh, John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, Aaron Burr, uh, uh, Aaron Burr... You said that. Mm. Say, Meatball, what do you think of the stuff that's been pulled off at school lately? Oh, I don't know. What do you think of it? Oh, I don't know. Have any idea who's doing it? Gee, I don't know. You got any idea? Well, I don't know. Who do you think? I don't know. Let's get back to the vice president. Okay. <laughs> Shoot. Uh, John Adams, uh, Thomas Jefferson, Aaron Burr, uh, say, I wonder who put the iron sulfide in Miss Keller's inkwell. 
How'd you know it was iron sulfide, meatball? Shucks, anybody knows that's the stuff that puts the smell in inkwell. You know who pulled that one, Piggy? Let's get back to Vice President. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, Aaron Burr. Uh, oh, gee, I don't know what good knowing the Vice President's is going to do a guy who's going to be a stunt man in the movies. I thought you were going to be a lion tamer. Well, lion taming's just one of the stunts I'm going to do. Talking about stunts, did you hear about the one somebody just pulled tonight over in the schoolyard? Which one's that? Ah, I bet you know about it already. Well, maybe I do and maybe I don't. I ain't saying. What are you talking about? Oh, about what they did to old man Flugerhammer's statue. <laughs> somebody dressed him up in a set of red flannel underwear and a corset. No kidding! <laughs> yeah. Boy, if they ever find out who did that, they'd be expelled from school prano, I bet. <laughs> Let's get on with the vice president's pig. All right. Say, could I borrow a glass of water? We had corned beef for dinner. Sure. Come on out in the kitchen. I'll get it for you. Boy, wait till Mr. Proctor sees the woolies on Flugie. Uh, did I hear right? Red flannels on the corset on Flugie? Or was I just dreaming? No. There's Piggy Banks' hat. It's true. Oh, let me think. Yes, that's what I'll have to do. Yes. Six. Hooker's just as much to blame as I am. I can't let Leroy be expelled. The... Hello, Judge. This is Gildersleeve. You gotta help me with something. I can't explain now, but I'll pick you up in about ten minutes. We got a date with an old schoolmate of yours. <laughs> This is the right part of the schoolyard? Why, of course. Not so loud, Gildersleeve. Oh. I'm a superior court judge. Can you picture what would happen if I'm caught? Yes, yeah, scandalous, isn't it? <laughs> oh, why do I let you get me into situations like this? Because you haven't got any more brains than I have. And where in the name of Goots and Borglum is that statue? Oops. Never mind, I found it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Flugelhammer up there. Flannels, corsets and all. Let's not hang around here all night, Gildersleeve. Come on, I'll boost you up. Well, wait a minute, I'll take this top coat off. All right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's better. All right, get down now. <sighs> Upsie daisy. Oh! oh, my poor back. You'll cave it in. <laughs> Push my other foot up, Judge. I will if you take it out of my hip pocket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there. Is that better? No. Ow! Now it's in my ear. Well, in one ear, not the other. If... Gildersleeve, get up there. Yeah. Okay. Uh oh. What's wrong? Judge, do you notice a sudden cold wind? <laughs> no, can't say that I do. Which way is it coming? Up. <laughs> the judge, hold my feet so I won't fall. I got him, I got him. You're all right. Solid as a rock. No, no, you're holding Pete's feet. What? The flat-footed Flugelhammer. Yeah, that's better. Now I can get to work. I wonder where Leroy ever found this corset. Make it snappy, Gildersleeve. Who do you think you are, Gypsy Rose Lee? Yep. Okay, okay, I've got it now. Here, catch it, Judge. Hurry up before somebody catches us. All right. Hey, Leroy must have sewn this underwear on. I never knew the little rascal could sew. How's it coming, Gildy? Just another second, yeah. Cut out that whistling, Judge. I'm not whistling. That must be the night watchman. Oh. Come on, rip it off. Let's scram. Okay, head for the car, Judge. Hey, who's that? Uh, this way, Judge. Quit calling me Judge, Gildersleeve. Oh, oh. Right, you. Don't you believe him, Gildy? Oh! <laughs> scatter, Judge, scatter. I'll meet you at the drugstore. <laughs> the principal sent for us, Uncle Moore. Well, now, you let me handle the whole thing, Marjorie. Do you think that Leroy might be in some trouble? Well, I didn't want to tell you, Marjorie, but your brother has turned his school into a midget version of Hell's a Poppin'. <gasps> Leroy? But he had such a fine record. He had, until he heard Judge Hooker and me brag about the foolish antics we performed as children. Oh, I hang my head when I think of it. And I'd like to hang the judges, too. Oh, now, Uncle Moore, he can't be that serious. No? Well, come on. You'll see. You know, after all, boys will be boys. Leroy is just a bit high-spirited. And what's wrong with that, sir? 
You were a boy once yourself, weren't you? Me? No. Uh, I was talking to the principal. <laughs> Rehearsing, I mean. <laughs> After you, my dear. Yes. Look at George Washington and the cherry tree. Just high spirits? Washington was a boy, too. We were all boys. Uncle, are you all right? Of course I am. No, no, I'm not. It's been a long, long time since I was called to the principal's office, but I still get that old feeling. Me, too. Yeah. Well, brace up, Uncle Mort. Here we are. Okay, let's go in. Hope he doesn't make us stay after school, Marjorie. Uh... Mr. Proctor? Yes? If I'm Leroy Forrester's uncle, and this is his sister, Marjorie. Well, I'm glad to see you two. I want to talk to you about that young man. Yes, I know, Mr. Proctor. Really, he's a fine boy at heart. I realize that. There's something I want to tell you Sure, about. but you were a boy once yourself, weren't you, Mr. Proctor? Well, of course I was. Yeah, you see, Marjorie, didn't I tell you? <laughs> Mr. Proctor was a boy once himself. <laughs> Probably high-spirited, too. Surely. Now, about your nephew. I hope you're not going to be harsh with him. But why should I be, Mr. Forrester? Uh, excuse me, my name's Gildersleeve. Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. Glad to meet you, Mr. G... Did you say Gildersleeve? Yes. Did I say something wrong? That happens to be my name. And does that happen to be your top coat hanging on that hook? Where? If... Yes. How did it happen to get here? Last night, that coat with your name in it was found by our night watchman. Oh, my goodness. Excuse me. I just remember a dental appointment. One moment. <laughs> There's something else that belongs to you. Your red flannel underwear and your corset. Corset? Why, Uncle Mort! I don't understand. Neither does Mr. Proctor. I understand only too well. Aren't you ashamed of yourself? A grown man. A big, fat, grown man. Going around at night putting union suits on statues. Yeah. Uncle Mort, what is this? Now, can't you explain? Sure, if I can get a word in edgewise. Actions speak louder than words, Gildersleeve. It's a lucky thing for you that Leroy Forrester is your nephew. It is? Yes. I'd expose you in a minute, but I don't want to spoil Leroy's big day. Leroy's big day? Oh, what has he done now? That's why I sent for you. Today, he's going to be presented with the Chamber of Commerce Medal as the outstanding student in Flugelhammer Junior High School. What? Leroy? Well, I knew it all along. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve will be with us again in a few minutes. But right now, I want to ask you, what is the most welcome compliment a hostess can receive? Well, I'm told it's sincere appreciation of the dishes she serves, comments on the lightness of her cakes, the flakiness of her pie crust, exclamations on how downright good everything tastes. So here's a tip for you housewives. For baking that's sure to win compliments, use delicious parquet margarine made by Kraft. You see, parquet margarine is a genuine flavor shortening, not a bland, tasteless fat. Yes, the same delicate, appetizing taste that makes parquet margarine so delicious for table use gives added flavor to baked foods, too. And parquet mixes so easily and creams so smoothly, it's really pleasant to use. Remember, too, that parquet margarine's flavor makes pan-fried foods taste better, and it doesn't spatter or stick to the pan. And whether you serve delicious parquet margarine at the table or use it for cooking, you are giving your family a nutritious, wholesome energy food. Remember, too, that parquet is an excellent source of vitamin A. So give your family the benefits of this delightful, nourishing food. Serve them economical parquet margarine tomorrow. Just ask your dealer for parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y. It's made by Kraft. <laughs> That's a beautiful medal, Leroy, and I'm mighty proud of you. But uh, won't you answer just one question for me, my boy? What is it, Unc? Who was responsible for all those escapades around your school? Now, Uncle Mort, I, I positively don't know. What's more, I don't want to know. And, and even if I did know, you don't think I'd squeal on my pal Piggy, do you? Uh, <laughs> you're a bright boy, Leroy. Good night. <laughs> Original music heard on this program was composed and conducted by William Randall. This is Jim Bannon speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company and inviting you to be with us again next week at the same time for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. This is the National Broadcasting Company.